Hey, Devon, you know what the only problem is with hiring me? <laughs> you take video. Yeah, I take a lot. I <laughs> <laughs> was say for a worse for is your kids. <laughs> I know. I know whether they want to be on or not. This kid's drafted. He's out of school now. He's 18. The military didn't draft him. So I was like, all right, that, I'm next in line, right? That's yeah. Right. You were talking about That's how you have a teenager in there on the computer. And you're, you mentioned like, yeah, hire my kid. Indeed. It's funny. I get that all the time. <laughs> it's an epidemic with these teenagers. You know, all these, all these parents say, oh, yeah, my kid, he really wants a job. And I talk to the kid and then I'm like, hey, you want to work today? Uh, uh, do you really need me? <laughs> so, Devon, everybody asked me, well, when is the avocado going to fruit, Gary, that you sell to me? And I say, well, uh, it could fruit right away. Now, that's not guaranteed. Why? As evidenced by the Ferte tree, who's beautiful and big, doesn't have any fruit whatsoever. Um, however, it's good buddy, the hoss is fully loaded and this is what you might find you know with growing avocados you never know it's like a it's like pulling the little slot uh lever and seeing what comes out uh sometimes you get a ton of fruit this is actually way too many for this tree i told devon he's probably gonna have to thin this thing out because you really don't want this many fruit you probably want 10 fruit just 10 fruit on a tree like this otherwise every one of these fruits takes an enormous amount of energy if you ever eat an avocado tree take a look at that seed that seed has so much energy packed into it, and that is because it must support the tree when it sprouts for quite an, an awful long period of time. It lives off the seed to get up to its initial height until it has a root deep enough to uh, support it. And so all that energy that's in the seed and the energy in the fruit, we all know how nutritious and how many calories these avocados have, uh, all that energy has to come up from the root zone into the tree into the fruit, the flowering and all that. And uh, every one of these things takes a ton of energy to, to accomplish that. And you can see the tree is only so big. So, you know, the best practice is really to limit the amount of fruit coming off that tree when it's young and it should be proportional to the size of the tree. Otherwise, what happens is all the energy will go into the fruit and then all the leaves will fall off. The tree will get completely <laughs> upset <laughs> and, and it'll give you a few fruit and sometimes they will even die. They can fruit to death. So that's a big stressor on the tree. Um, and when my kid comes out without me, he'll explain all those things to you, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, also uh, everybody, when you get your tree, just make sure you paint the thing white. Here's a little residue of the white that's left over from before. But uh, if the tree defoliates, which it sometimes does during installation stress, that's the most important time to uh, paint that so the sun doesn't scorch the bark and slow down the growth of the tree. The whole idea, and here's a reed. This is a reed. This is fantastic. Look at all the fruit there. So yes, the trees are able to fruit right away the moment we give them to you. It's not guaranteed, but occasionally it happens. This one probably has 100 fruit all over it. And this is, look how low this poor little tree is. So, so remember, you're going to be a good daddy. Wow. You're going to, uh, so you just print it all. Print you could even just take them like this. Well, let's see. It's kind of sacrilege, but just cut it off. And then all of the plant material from these trees has a chemical in it when it decomposes that protects the trees from root rot. So the leaves, everything, you always want to leave all the material under the tree. And even if you're printing some leaves off other stuff, you, know, you dump copious amounts of material under the tree, anything you can, any kind of mulch, leaves, twigs, bark, chips, whatever, to mimic a natural forest ecosystem. And that would be stuff falling down constantly and just piling up. Because it has a shallow root system, here are the roots. The soil came off a little bit, that's no big deal, we'll fix that. But there are a lot of little hair roots in there and um, you know, they're surface roots and they love to consume all of this bark. So that's the whole story. Get your white paint on your trunk. Uh, make sure the thing doesn't fruit to death and um, know that sometimes it won't fruit that year. That's why Devon's hedging his bets and he's getting three trees. He's getting a reed, four, four, four trees, a reed, uh, which will make the big old cannonball size fruit, maybe not cannonball, softball size, 
the most beautiful leaf of all the trees is the semi-dwarf. Then he's getting the Mexicola over here with the beautiful lime green uh, foliage. That's going to be a uh, fall, the earliest fruiting tree there is, uh, followed by Fuerte is going to be a winter fruiting tree. And this tree is uh, known as a climbing tree because it has all these lateral branches. See all the lateral branches coming out? And uh, that could be a wonderful tree to, to get your kids to climb once uh, you know it's bigger. It also has sort of a cupped leaf. You're starting to see all the, uh, the, the, uh, the variation in the leaves. But I can look at that and say that's a fuerte. And then the hoss has an elongated leaf and it kind of has a droop to it. Um, and that uh, hoss will be fruiting from May until about October. And that's the same period that we have for the reed. And right now I want you, this would be a for and after picture. So Devon, look, he's like really thin and fit, right? You know, he's looking really good. There's a lot of calories coming your way, my friend. You, you think you'll look like that in five years? Or are you gonna look more like Chubby Gary? As long as I'm happy. <laughs> Three avocados a day I eat. I think that's the difference between Devon and me. <laughs> All right, that's the story. And if you're wondering, yes, Carson is still getting paid by the hour just to hear me talk. Yeah. What do you think about that, Carson? It's pretty good. Yeah. Hey, Devon, Devon, what's your dog's name? So you guess. <laughs> what, 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 why, is he, why is he so interested in that hole? He's very interested in his baby sister's placenta. Oh, oh it's a placenta. Moms, yeah. What do you bet that tree grows the best? Oh, I hope so. This is the first so. time. This is going to be nice. The placenta is between mom and the baby. The, That's mom, dad, this is baby's room. I get it. Okay. The placenta Dude. reaches the mom and baby. The, is that how, is that how spelled? We didn't do that. Is that... That's where we messed up, Carson. That's why you're so messed up. <laughs> some, we, didn't, we didn't follow protocol with the this placenta. This one's got my mom in it. Oh, God. <laughs> and this one's got my first dog in it. <laughs> Okay, so we're planning the uh, <laughs> plant the fuerte okay, on your dog. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna plant the hoss on your mom. Yeah, it'll be the strongest. Okay, she's strong. <laughs> she's strong? She's yeah. Strong. Oh, good. And then we're gonna plant the reed on your. Did you say your daughter? Mom's your daughter's placenta. Your daughter's placenta. placenta, which is kind of like her. It's part of her. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know. All right. Well. Maybe I'll have some little like like flaky cells from my skin fall off while I'm vigorously digging, and therefore uh, I'll leave a little bit of me here forever, exactly. and it'll be just one big happy family. Well, that one, these two have nothing, nobody in them yet. Nobody. Okay. Well, I guess that's all right. I just want everybody to know, you know, I'm not going to flip out or freak out if you start telling me there's placentas buried in the garden <laughs> everywhere where I'm digging and planting the trees. I'm not one of those superstitious types, so. You know, I'm not going to discriminate against you because you bury placentas in your backyard or your mom or your dog or whatever. So I'm, I'm okay with that. I think it's all good. All right. So let's get busy, Carson. Yeah. Who's that future avocado addict? This is Ramy Sam. Ramy Sam? How do you say that? Ramy Sam. Ramy Sam. Sam. I thought you said Ramy Zam. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, I like Ramy Sam better. <laughs> Ramy Sam's good. Ramy Zam is better. But anyway, so uh, here we go. We're planting avocados here to feed the family. And uh, sometimes the avocados, one of the things they hate the most is what, Carson? Being taken out of the container. Well, not so much, but what, under all, what, what conditions? They like lose all the dirt. The yeah. So if the avocado is not too, avocados don't hold their soil together very well as a rule. And they need to be a very big tree in a 15 gallon container to hold the uh, soil together. What they, hate, what they hate the most of everything is for that whole root ball to fall apart. And this one probably won't, but I didn't want to run at risk. So what you do is you get your favorite um, uh, patriotic knife out, which Carson holds in his pocket all the time, apparently. Except when he travels on planes, right? Yeah. yeah. And then uh, you cut the bottom off very carefully, just like this. You lift the tree in. And uh, well, actually, before you do that, you actually will cut these uh, slits into the container. And the roots will obviously come out the bottom, which they already are. And they will also blow out the sides and they'll blow this whole pile apart. The wonderful thing about this kind of an installation, especially if you're on a hilltop, is that um, 
you can water inside this watering well. It's a natural watering well. And you can put your drip in here or whatever, and it can flood this area without running off down the hill. So that's another benefit of doing it this way. And of course, we're planting the tree slightly above grade uh, for finish level, which all these avocados love. But that's how you deal with an avocado that looks like it uh, is a little premature to come out of that container and hold the whole root ball together when you do that. As part of my hopeful retirement plan, this is actually a training day. Devon asked me a really, really good question. And what was that, Devon? How best to water. Listen up, son. Yeah. This is what you're going to tell people yeah. when you show up. He's better looking. He's more fun than I am. You're going to enjoy having him come to your house more than me. So, uh, watering. Well, first, let's explain what we did here. Carson, can you give me a little bit of a watering well around that tree right there? It's like it didn't really get done right. Um, we have this wonderful vegetable garden on the side house. Side, sides of houses are always the best for vegetable gardens because, like, use it for storage, whatever. You can't really have parties back here. Well, I guess you could, but... Uh, anyway, you see what Devon's doing here. He's got these wonderful vegetable planters in the middle. But he does have room. This south fit, you can see where my shadow is, right? That's facing north. And so uh, the shadows here, if you put a tree in, will go that way um, for the most part. And the trees on the very end of the north end of your vegetable planters uh, are great because the sun will shine underneath and it won't rob sunlight from the vegetables. So it's a wonderful place to put your food for us and let the trees get big. We failed to mention that he has a lime right there and uh, three different, four different avocados, which we already talked about. Um, now these trees here are a little more tender. This is the reed. This is the hoss. That's the fuerte. That's the Mexicola. That's the lime. So you can see we're between two houses here. Just we're in Moraga, California. We're in a place that potentially could get cold if we had a freeze like we did in 1990, but we haven't had one since. So that's 30 years. Uh, so when possible, lay your trees out in a way. If you can put them between buildings like this, this is gonna create a lot of protection from not only the, the freezing conditions because each building is giving off heat. It's part of the heat island effect. All the windows are giving off heat. The structure's giving off heat. Uh, there's gonna be less cold airflow around these trees. And then also, um, when you lay the trees out themselves, you wanna think about these things. And the lime tree stays smaller it's going to have avocados growing tall above it. You wouldn't want to plant the lime tree on the north side of those trees. It won't get enough sun. On the south side, it'll be fine, even if the avocados grow over it like they probably will. It'll get all the sun coming in from the south, uh, lighting that tree up and causing it to fruit. Uh, now the hardiest tree here is the Mexicola. We're sort of splitting hairs, but we put it directly in the middle of the structures where there's the least amount of warmth coming from the structures. The second most hardy tree, that, hard, that tree's hardy to 18 degrees. It's like virtually impossible to get that cold here. But anyway, we laid it out this way anyway, following the principles. Second tr hardiest tree is the Fuerte. It's probably hardy to 25 degrees or so. And uh, it's not next to the house. Now these two trees, the Haas tree is hardy to 26 degrees and the Reed tree is hardy down to about 28. And so we put those right next to the house because literally the house itself has a zone of about three feet where it literally has about five degrees warmer temperatures than everything else. And so that's the layout here. Back to the question, watering. Okay, so what you wanna do is soak these things in really good right when you put them in. And we fill these planting wells up. See the little planting wells, we elevated the plantings here. There's actually really good soil down underneath. The part that we put on top is not amended because it doesn't need to be and we've created these nice little planting wells. The 15 gallon container itself here is the planting well, nice and neat, and uh, the roots will blow out of that, no problem. But what you wanna do when you first plant these trees is to uh, soak these things and basically fill that planting well up three or four times. There's really no amount of water you could put on this tree right away that'll hurt it. You wanna wet the whole entire area around the uh, root ball to encourage the roots to go into that area. You don't want to just wet the root ball. You want to wet the whole area. The more you wet, the longer that moisture reservoir will stay there and the longer it'll take to dry out. Now, ongoing, every day, I'm gonna be more elaborate about this answer. I'm gonna do it once, make everybody watch the video. <laughs> then I will never have, I'll never have to answer this question again. This is like the thousandth time. I <laughs> every day of the year has a different, actually there are, two days of the year 
that have the same on average water stress in any given environment. Uh, and we basically, the least amount of water stress on a tree and where we are is generally January 1st. The highest stress, and that's a little bit after solstice, days are short, we're getting a lot of rain, there's a lot of moisture in the ground at that point, typically, on average. The worst day is about two or three weeks after summer solstice, and that's about July 15th. That's the highest water stress you have in these plants. Now in the winter time, there's actually a surplus of water in the ground, typically. This could change because of variation in the climate at any given point. But typically there's a big bell curve and the bell curve starts low below the demand the plant requires. Then it goes above the, de the demand the plant requires is a flat line all the way across. The, the bell curve will go up and uh, cross that line that the plant needs and that's when it's in a deficit. That's the area you need to water. So you need to compensate by watering during that whole period. And it gets to the very top, like the roller coaster, July 15th, and then it starts coming down in, in, in September by about November 15th or so, depending upon the rains, uh, you shouldn't need to water much more. And so because of this constantly changing requirement of water, every day theoretically needs a different water. Devon just looked at his watch. Are you getting, you got somewhere to go? No, no, I got I'm only, it's I'm, only half, I'm only watch. halfway through my it's dissertation. Okay, I'm almost done. All right, all right. You're listening, right? I'm listening. All right, you're the guy for that. You're I asked the question. Yeah, that's right. Okay, and the kid over there, he's listening. This is what you're gonna tell people, Carson. Carson's really talkative too, so he's gonna love doing this. Okay, so you probably in summertime, spring's gonna be less, fall's gonna be less, winter's gonna be nothing, summer's gonna be a lot. And of course, if you have 100 degree days stacked up on top of each other, you're gonna to have to really bump it up. But I would say on average in spring and fall to get these trees established, you should put five gallons of water each on these trees, maybe for the first couple of weeks, every other day. Now, if it's foggy and cold, back off. If it's raining, back off. If it's super hot, maybe every day for while well, it's 100 degrees, okay? Then after two weeks, maybe back off to like maybe twice a week, the same amount. And uh, avocados love to have their moisture, well, we'll put it in the well to spread around. But ultimately, that can have a little bit of moisture all around the top that's, that soaks in through the mulch that Devon has promised he's gonna put in place. Yeah. They can get repossessed if you don't take care of my trees. Oh man, okay. They're not your trees until they're thriving. No, their mulch is coming. All right, and then um, the best, you know, you have little soaker hoses around them, whatever it takes to water all around the tree. But for the first several weeks, you really want to soak these wells, get the water in deep, get the roots uh, migrating out from the original root ball. And the other thing that we like to do, which Devon has already done while we were cleaning up, is to hose off the foliage of the trees, get all the dust off. The trees actually have stomata in here, and that's what they use to breathe oxygen. They need oxygen and sunlight to grow and water. Basically, that's all they need. So you want to give them as much as you can of all those elements. And the way you can do that is wash off the dirt that collects here so they can actually breathe better. And any other questions, Devon? I don't think so. Are we good to go? Drip systems work great on these things. Yeah, I've got that. Even little, little mini misters down there because they can okay. spread the water out. I've got like a circular mister kind of thing, which is from a video. Yeah. Uh, micro yeah. sprinkler. Yeah, those are great, except in this circumstance here, you have your siding your house. Yeah. You have to be kind of careful yeah. on that. You could put up a little sheet metal right there. Yeah. Well, It'll slide off, but uh, that's why I was thinking soaker hoses in here. Um, but uh, as long as you keep the water yeah. off the house, you don't want rot on the house. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, again, here's the before picture. He's nice and slim. We'll see what he look. We'll come back in a couple of years. He's going to be a little chunky like me. Three avocados a day. It's amazing what it'll do to your your figure. At least it's less hamburgers, maybe. Yeah, less hamburgers. All right, Carson. Any questions? Let's go to the next job. Devon forgot to ask me about the fertilizer that I actually gave to him, no charge, because he was so cool about telling me about placentas in his yard. <laughs> so, Devon, okay, so here's our, here's our uh, organic fruit tree food, citrus and fruit tree, avocado, whatever. We sell this stuff at the nursery, it's great. It's got a picture of an avocado on it, so you know for sure that's what it's for. Um, I am going to apply this right now. I would say it's totally organic, so I'm not too worried about like, you know, getting on my hands. You know, if you wanna wear gloves, that's between you and God. So, you know, whatever you wanna do. But I'm just gonna grab it, sprinkle it around. I, I'm gonna take like a handful of this stuff 
put it on the trees, just sprinkled at the base. You're probably gonna wanna do that maybe like once a month if you really wanna baby your trees. Uh, maybe once a quarter, skipping winter. They don't do much in winter. So three times a year in the, in the, in the non-winter quarters. Um, or you could be like me at my house and do nothing. And then your trees will turn kind of yellow. The fruit won't be as big, but they'll still make it. And, you know. But if you want like super dark green, everything, big beefy fruit, then it's a good thing to fertilize these trees. And I tell people to do as I say, not as I do. So here we go. There's the citrus fruit right there. <laughs> 